took me forever to get one for whatever reason. That guy, check out the head and the face on that snake. He's absolutely beautiful. Losing it. There he is! <laughs> That's incredible! Look at that guy! Hello everybody! Today we are going to be doing some urban herping for some species that I've actually never seen before. Today's biggest target is the mini line skink. Um, it's a species that's pretty common in Colorado, but is one that I have never seen anywhere in Colorado before. In the name of finding everything in Colorado, which is a huge goal for me and is something that I am trying to take care of this year, um, we're gonna go out and flip some trash and hopefully turn one of these little lizards up So without any further ado, I'm gonna make my way over to our spot and hopefully we turn one up All right, so first stop here. We've got a prairie rattlesnake sitting right here And then under the same piece of tin We've got yet another one. So that's a double flip. These guys are probably super thick through here in this abandoned property so um, That just gives us a good reason to watch where we're putting our feet, but um, I fully expect to see a few more of these Pretty cool to see him here um, at our first stop. Hopefully turn up uh, maybe a milk snake and one of those mini line skinks soon. So unfortunately, right as I was getting ready to take my camera out and talk about how calm these snakes are, this one exploded and became cranky, but the one over here on the left is still being a good boy. Next snake of the day here under this piece of tin. Okay, that was spooky. Next snake of the day hanging out here is another prairie rattlesnake. Um, he was flipped under one of these pieces of tin here. Um, this just goes to show you though why you really have to be careful where you place your fingers because I mean if he was sitting right there coiled up reach down and grab that piece of tin um, you may be bitten and that's always not the goal so we're gonna keep moving there's plenty more to flip here hopefully we'll find some more. Alright well here was our target for the day under the last uh, possible piece of cover that I could flip, I looked down and saw this guy. This is a mini line skink. Um, these guys are pretty widespread in Colorado, but for one reason or another, I've just never seen them. So um, it's pretty cool. This is the first one I've ever seen. These guys are pretty widespread through the Great Plains, so it's no shock to see them, and they are pretty common, but it took me forever to get one for whatever reason. Come on, dude. Here's a better look at him. He's going to definitely dart off my hand while I do this, but uh, there he is. Pretty long tail on these guys. You have to be real, real gentle when handling them because um, they can drop that tail and, you know, obviously you never want to do that to a lizard. So, beautiful guy though. Those stripes on the back, oh, uh, I'm going to close my hand up. Those stripes on the back are obviously real gorgeous. Um, super cool little lizards though. We have two subspecies of these in Colorado. This is the mini line skink and then... In the southern mountains, we have uh, variable skinks, which we will be trying for tomorrow. Um, it will be my last skink that I need to see in Colorado. But um, this guy's pretty cool. I'm going to take some photos. The sun is literally just above the horizon right now, so I've only got a little bit of time to talk about him and make sure I get good photos, so I want to make sure I do that. Today we are in northeastern Colorado looking for this guy. This is a yellow mud turtle. Um, this is one of the more difficult species of turtles in Colorado to find. Um, I was literally just driving down this highway here, saw what I thought was a box turtle, pulled up and realized that it was actually what I'm here to see. This is, this is crazy. <laughs> so it is barely nine o'clock and we already have our biggest target for the day in my lifer yellow mud turtle. This now means that I have seen every turtle native to Colorado within Colorado's borders, which is something to be proud of. I am gonna just release this guy here after a couple quick phone photos. Um, he's trying to cross the road and you know, it's gotta be pretty stressful for him, waste a lot of energy sitting here. So um, I'm gonna take a few quick photos of this guy. We are gonna go look for these in habitat a little later on and then I will release him on the other side of the road. This guy should be thanking me. He's getting grouchy with me instead. Anyways, this might be one that's trying to lay some eggs over here or something, so... Oh, there's a coach whip right here, too. Yo! What? Where did he go? Oh, there's a hole right there he got down. Our little buddies right here, there was a coach whip that was there that I lost because I had the camera and he got under my feet, but I'm going to move this guy over here. Um, it is an agricultural field, but hopefully he finds his way and stays safe. See you later, buddy. Evidently, it's a pretty good day to be a turtle in the road. This is an ornate box turtle. 
pretty handsome one sitting here in the road. Heading over to a spot where we're going to be flipping some milk snakes, and I see another, another turtle in the road. Just going to move him off the, to the side, and we're going to keep on moving. Let's go this way, buddy. Stay out of the road. You're going to get yourself into trouble. All right, so that was pretty interesting. Two turtles and a snake before we even got to our first spot is always a good thing. As I mentioned, today we are in northeastern Colorado looking for some animals that I've never seen in Colorado before um, and some that are all too familiar but are some of my favorites. Big targets for the day are more yellow mud turtles. Um, I really want to get some photographs of them in habitat and not like in the middle of the road where they're in trouble. Um, Milk snakes, as always, are out here. I'm really hoping to see some of those today. We're actually at a spot for those right now that I'm going to go hit. Um, after that, we're going to go to a pond nearby, check out, try and see some turtles, and then we're going to spend the rest of the day um, just driving through the grasslands, flipping stuff, and seeing what we can turn up. So without further ado, I'm going to hike to where we're going, and we're going to start flipping the first spot. First in-hand snake of the day right here is this eastern yellow belly racer that I flipped under a piece of wood over here. Um, he's being weirdly shy. Usually they're pretty bitey, but um, these guys, I think, are our most encountered snake of the year. Um, that or Tantilla, which is... Uh, a nice change of pace, usually it's Veardis or something, but um, this guy is going to be our first find of the day. Nothing too crazy right here, even though he is insanely, insanely beautiful. Check out the patterning there, or I should say the lack thereof, but just that color is so beautiful. Amazing, amazing yellow belly on these guys. Just all around wonderful snake. So I'm going to release this guy after a few in-hand photos, and then we're going to keep moving. Here's this snake one more time. We are officially on the board, which is always nice. I'm just going to release this guy right here where I found him, and we're going to keep on moving. All right, second in-hand snake of the day is our biggest target snake. It's a milk snake there. I actually flipped that last spot for about 20 more minutes after, uh, after we first went there. Came around the corner, found a pile of concrete, and this guy was waiting for me. He is pretty deep in shed, which is a little unfortunate, but still a wonderful, wonderful snake. All right, here's another look at this guy. As you can see here on the sides, he's showing some of the characteristics that we saw uh, last week when we were looking at pale milk snakes, that being um, that that black and that red really cuts off towards the belly. Um, so there's probably a little bit more pale milk snake influence in these guys um, than in some of the other ones in northeastern Colorado, but that's an absolutely beautiful snake. Um, I'm sure that he would be even more beautiful if it wasn't in shed. I'm still going to take some photographs, um, probably won't take as much time as I normally would, but I do want to document this snake properly and make sure that I um, have some photos to look back on. But that is just a beautiful, beautiful snake, cool pattern on him, um, definitely a unique looking snake, um, not really too much like any of the other milk snakes I've seen in Colorado. Um, so I am going to photograph this guy and we're going to keep on moving. See you later kiddo. Two pieces of concrete away from that original snake is this beautiful one. This is yet another milk snake in this same little area. Beautiful, beautiful snake. Once again, seeing that same bite off in the black there that we were seeing with those pale milk snakes up in Nebraska a few weeks ago. So beautiful, beautiful snake, high red, absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna take some time to photograph this snake because it's a little larger and a little more attractive than the last one and then we are gonna keep on moving. Here's this guy one more time. I'm going to release him right back where he was found. Next snake of the day is yet another milk snake. This one quite a bit larger and quite a bit more attractive than those last two. Um, I actually was moving here to look for some turtles, but under another piece of concrete was this beautiful, beautiful, real interesting looking milk snake. That guy, check out the head and the face on that snake. He's absolutely beautiful. Once again, because this is the biggest target of the day, I am going to photograph this guy, and then we will be back to talk about him a little more. Here's this absolutely beautiful milk snake one more time. Ugh, that is just such a beautiful snake. Awesome head on him. Everything about that snake is just fantastic. As great as this snake is, there are more out there, and we have some turtles to be finding, so I'm going to release this guy, and we're going to keep on moving. Hope we find those mud turtles soon. All right, buddy. I'm trying to release you back under, and you're not getting it. There it goes. What a lovely snake. Alright, so I'm working my way up the river here. Come over here and look down to that. That is a yellow mud turtle in Colorado. 
pretty cool. That's our second one of the day. Um, I'm not going to bother them too much because I kind of like to get some in habitat photographs here. But awesome little guy. I'm going to uh, photograph him real quick, try and get him out of his shell, and then we'll pick him up and talk about him. Here's the look at this guy. Cool carapace on those guys. This just seems like something that really doesn't belong in a state as dry as Colorado. As you can see on the side by the leg there, he's got a leech on him, so I'm gonna have to remove that, give him a, a helping hand for being so cooperative with us. Unfortunately, this is about as good of a look at this guy as I've had because he's just decided to hole up in his shell. There you can get a kind of a look at his face, but um, he's basically just, you know, being a turtle hiding from us, so um, I'm just going to let him go back in this stuff that he was in. Maybe we'll be able to find another one. If not, I'm going to move down south. We're going to look for some more milk snakes. I'm just going to release this beautiful turtle right where we found it, right here. Um, it'll escape down into the mud there and basically become a ghost. So It was a pleasure to see this guy here. Um, hopefully we see a few more. I would like a few good photographs of one on my camera, but... Um, unfortunately, you know, the scene with the first one wasn't ideal and this one just wouldn't come out. So, um, just going to keep moving, hope we run into another. Not far from where that turtle was, I bend down to see some frog eggs. That's pretty cool. We're not two minutes up the creek here. And there is yet another yellow mud turtle just hanging out in the bottom of this little section of the creek. There you can kind of get a better look at what they look like. <laughs> That's awesome. See you, Phil. This one's a little bit more robust than that last one. Look at how fat he is. He was actually kind of being active with us there. That is so cool. It's awesome to see these guys so abundant here, even if it is right on the... Ugh. Oh my god, they smell horrible. It's awesome to see these guys so abundant here right on the edge of their range. Um, beautiful plaster on these guys. Cool carapace. I love the way the, the carapace is shaped there. These guys are just awesome, even if they are. Oh, that smells horrible. Once again, I'm going to try and get some photographs of this guy since I was unable to do that with the last one. Um, give that a couple of minutes, and then I'm going to release him where he was found, and we're going to keep on moving. Five minutes away from where we found the last turtle. Here's another one. This one looks to be just about the biggest turtle we've seen all day. He's also trying to figure out how to get away from us, so gonna have to be real gentle but I think I might be able to pick him up without him losing it there he is <laughs> that's incredible look at that guy <laughs> these guys are so cool <laughs> it's just a completely alien thing that I never thought I'd see in Colorado I mean I figured I'd see him but it just does not look like that thing belongs in Colorado either way that's number four for the day and the third found in habitat finally letting us get a good look at him Got those feet out, cool eyes. As you can see, big strong claws on both sides. That's for digging into the mud and digging nests and whatnot. But it's pretty cool. I'm just gonna leave this guy right here. Try and get a few photos maybe. <laughs> that is so, so cool. All right, well, this one looks like it's gonna be more cooperative with me, so I am gonna try and get some photos before I release him. All right, next find of the day. Uh, it's been a few hours since y'all have seen me, but an ornate box turtle crossing this county road here. Beautiful carapace on this guy. Look at that. That's absolutely stunning. And he's not happy with me at all. He's trying to bite me. Not having it today, but absolutely stunning turtle. Um, he's, as you can see, he's trying pretty hard to uh, get away from me. So I'm gonna let him do just that after a quick photo. And then we're gonna keep on moving. All right, buddy, stay away from the road there. Careful. Coming down this road, and this is our third ornate box turtle of the day. This one a little bit shyer and a little bit less uh, exciting looking than the last one, but it is another one. It is a little unfortunate that he's kind of trapped in between two agricultural fields. Um, I honestly don't even know how he makes it out here. But these guys find a way through. Um, I'm going to put him on the other side of the road because it looks like he was trying to cross. Um, and then we will keep on moving down to the next spot. All right, be good, buddy. See you later. Why are you so muddy, kiddo? <laughs> is that cow poop? Got another one here. Um, this one is caked in either mud or cow poop. I can't really tell which. But 
we're just gonna move it to the other side of the road, get it up this hill, and wish it the best. See you later, buddy. There's a big, handsome male ornate box turtle right there. Show us your face, buddy. I just want to get a good look at this guy's face because he's absolutely beautiful. Come on out, buddy. Nope. All right, well, once again, there's a beautiful plaster on, on him. Insanely beautiful carapace there. I think this is number six or seven on the day, maybe five or six. He was heading this way, so I'm just going to take him as far as the fence and we'll wish him well and hopefully he doesn't find himself in the road ever again. See you later, buddy. All right, so as the day widens down, I'm just going to be spending my time working through some amazing, amazing habitat here. Um, it's always cool to walk these river corridors, you know, in the grasslands where it's so drab and then you get in here and it's so green so lush so full of wildlife i haven't seen any snakes or reptiles yet but um just full of wildlife deer birds the whole nine yards it's absolutely wonderful out here